had no idea that there were other people like me out there living their lives. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Hello there, welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life, where we're all about turning positive into a plus. And today we're talking Rock Hudson. There's a new documentary out, All That Heaven Allowed, and I'm joined by the film's director, Stephen Kayak. Good to see you, sir. Hello, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, why this story? Why tell it now? Why do you think it still matters? Um, why, I think it, it, it's always a good time to tell and retell stories of LGBTQ plus people from uh, all corners of history. Um, and just with the rise in backlash against LGBTQ people in the last number of years, you know, it just feels like we're in a terrible backslide. So, geez, you know, getting these stories out, visibility is always uh, optimal. And uh, this was a big widescreen story that had implications, not just for Hollywood history, but, uh, you know, Rock Hudson's story really impacted the early days of the HIV AIDS crisis in a really meaningful way that bears retelling. Yeah, I, the, the film is called All That Heaven Allowed, but I, I read that it was initially called The Accidental Activist. Why that title and why the change? Well, uh, that title, I mean, it really, in a, in a way, sums up a big part of the film perfectly. Uh, it is kind of still somewhat unknown how in control of his narrative he was during the last days of, of, of his life, you know? Uh, he may very well have been content to go to the grave with his secret intact, but it just wasn't to be, right? So just the sheer fact that the news about him not only being gay, but him having uh, AIDS uh, became public at that time. We're talking 1985, when there was still so much confusion and fear around the issue. Uh, it made a huge impact on how people talked about it, on fundraising. It just can't be understated. It's really, um, it was a seismic shift. It was a huge shock to everybody. Well, yeah, especially since the, the administration at the time, the Reagan administration, weren't even saying the words. And as, as you document in the film, you know, Rock was close uh, to Nancy Reagan. They were good friends. And when assistance was asked for, uh, she had the White House respond, didn't she? The basic response of the administration was, well, if we help him, we have to help all of them, right? So why bother? We can't get involved with this right now. I really like how you're able to put Rock's queerness out there front and center, but you do it in such a unique, clever way by taking clips from his films, from his home movies and stuff, and perhaps not in the original context that they were meant for, but you're able to cut it together. So it really shows his queerness. Was that, how did you come to that decision in putting the film together like that? Uh, well, you know, we wanted to show as many of the movies as we could and squeeze as much in there because they're, they're great and they're just so gorgeous to look at. But there was a real uh, desire to kind of queer the space for him. Oh, you. Hiding in closets isn't going to cure you. Our greatest achievement in a way was to really slice movies together and kind of break, you know, break it down so that in a way he could cruise guys in other movies, you know, and we kind of sutured different films together to kind of create this to queer the cinematic space for him, to sort of let him be himself in a way that he couldn't be back then. One of the lines that sticks out to me um, from one of your interview subjects was, um, you know, he was seen as the all-American boy and the all-American boy got AIDS. And there's something so sort of poignant and simple in just that one line that resonates to this day because we still think that HIV AIDS is something that only affects white gay men or certain, you know, IV drug users. But really, it can affect the all-American boy and that all-American dream, can't it? Well, yeah, that, that was the crucial turning point, right? Even though now all of a sudden, you know, the housewives and grannies who thought he was like their big heartthrob were confronted with the fact that he was a gay man. I mean, that in itself was a shock to the system. But to just confront the fact that that character could have AIDS, um, it, you know, it was the first time someone that famous had been public about it, uh, willingly or not. And it was, you know, revealed in such a way, it makes you, it makes the general conversation shift really dramatically. Uh, so that was really, you know, I think his major contribution. 
And then, of course, like the initial funding that he threw at the cause becomes AMFAR, you know, that Elizabeth Taylor then takes and builds into this powerful fundraising organization. So a lot of good came out of it. As a filmmaker, as a storyteller, as someone in the industry in Hollywood, what role do you think Hollywood has in this day and age, fast forward to now, in telling the truth about what it means for people who are living with HIV, to get the facts right, to share and tell stories that paint the real picture, not the 1985 picture? Yeah, no, it's incredibly important, you know? I mean, granted, I'm, I'm doing documentaries uh with, you know, a little bit outside the, the Hollywood mainstream, uh, as much as we can be in Hollywood, um, living in Los Angeles. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting because, you know, that is a narrative that I, it still hasn't gotten its due. I mean, there's been significant movies and TV movies and things a lot significantly, I think in the late eighties, early nineties, it's one part of an ongoing battle to, create visibility across the LGBTQ plus spectrum or anybody living with HIV AIDS. That doesn't even have to be gay people, you know? Right. What's something that, that you learned about rock in making this documentary that really surprised you and that has kind of stuck with you that you'll carry with you? <laughs> Do you want the cheeky answer? Uh, or the... Uh, Yeah. Give me the cheeky. <laughs> well, give me the cheeky and the truth. Tell us. Well, you know, I, I love our interview with, uh, um, with his his old friend there who just could not possibly <laughs> handle rock's manhood uh yeah he was hung like a horse apparently um just but um but it just it was it was it came up a lot um but uh on the flip side of that i mean what it, it's it's kind of the boring answer but like there isn't a single person we found that said anything negative about him like he was truly one of the most beloved respected generous and kind people you would come across in hollywood and, and he didn't do it performatively i mean he really he helped young actors he was really like he was he would help crew members in need uh he was just a really great guy apparently and threw a hell of a pool party Stephen Kayak, thank you so much for your time the documentary is called rock hudson all that heaven allowed check it out thank you appreciate it that's going to do it for this episode of Plus Talk. If you want more information about anything we've talked about today, check out the website pluslifemedia.com and you can always follow us across social media. We are at Plus Life Media. Until next time, be nice to one another. Take care. I'll see you soon.